I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun, feeling like a someone. I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun, feeling like a someone. We're south of the equator, navigator, gotta hit the road. Gotta hit the road. JT here with our team by team analysis, our preseason spring training of Z's team called Time. Now, Z drafted from the Dominican Republic and he had a couple of funny draft moments because he had this nutcase, Jimbo, as his <laughs> representative in the draft room. And it. Jimbo would say, like, I'm ready for my pick, but I still have a minute left. So I'm just going to wait. We tried explaining to him that you don't have to go until the end of the clock every time. Um, okay, let's talk about this squad because you know Z tried everything to get Maxi Deed or Farka or bring back something that he had last year. Um, but he wasn't able to do it. And then when Hannon went at 23, he took Jeff at 23. Excuse me, he took Jeff at 23 overall. When Hannon went at 20 or something, he took Jeff at 23 overall, which is earlier than most projections had it. Um, okay, thoughts on this team? So, the Jeff pick, I played with him one time in my whole life, and I'm so upset that I didn't have the opportunity to play with him more. After play, playing with him last year, I'm I wish I played with him more. And I guarantee if we did play together more, we would have won a championship together. He is a legend. He's a great player, knows what to say to his team, knows how to get his team up. He's awesome. Um, and he still has a lot left in the tank. However, this is not the right pick at 23, and I even think Jeffrey will admit it. I took him last year at, I took him last year at 50, uh, 53, 52, whatever. And he could have he should have went 30, 33, 34, like you know, 30. That's where he should. That's where he belongs in that 30, 35 range. He'll even tell you that. So he he could have took a really good player there at twenty three. Guess who he could have took? Who? Oh. He could have took Mike Beta. Wow. Could have Michael Beta on this team and Jeffrey Saka also later. He could have. Or if Jeffrey Saka got picked, which he wouldn't have, he could have took an, uh, Eddie Harari. So. I, I, I really think he whiffed on that. He could have had another superstar. And then you have Jimmy. You so, got Shimmy. You got Zach. You got Michael Bader. And then, then so now, he, he, now you're rolling. Here's Z's. So uh, I don't like that. But here's Z's issue, okay? Obviously, Max Hadid was gone. Nabi, gone. Saka, Abe Saka was gone. Um, and then you have Jeffrey, who we took. Z was not interested in Hannon. He was not interested in, uh, in in Harari, but that's wrong. He wasn't. He didn't want him. Not interested in Abe Pitcher Cohen, and not at all interested in Leo. He and was locked in, and it's very hard to draft this way. He was locked into one pitcher and one pitcher only, and he felt that where Michael Beta did go on that wraparound to Eshko and Parker. He thought Jeffrey was going to that squad if he didn't pick him there. He could have. I, I, I don't think so at all. Um, he also had the 33 pick. He took Aharon. He didn't, Aharon, I'm a huge fan of, and I'm going to get to him. He's a stud beyond stud. He's going to be a future top three round pick in this league. He's going to be like the next Irwin type. Um, he's a real big stud, but he could have taken Michael Beta, and then he could have taken a pitcher at 33. But again, and, he did not want any of these guys. But he that's, was locked but, into one. Well, but that's not that's you can't just say I don't want those guys. Those are these are good guys. These but are the, but pitchers. he had no draft flexibility, is what I'm saying. So he was hamstrung where he had to overdraft Jeffrey at 23. No excuses. I'm not giving him that out. Okay. I don't. I don't. Uh, you can't just say I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy. I only like this guy, and then go after him. That doesn't work. It's a it's a poor move. He could have had an extra star on his team. Forget Michael Bate. He could have had an extra an extra guy. And he doesn't have that. And that's the guy missing from this team. It's a solid team. He's got every position filled. Nate at third. Shortstop. Sol, excellent glove. Jimbo, excellent glove. Mishon can handle his own at first. Good player. Chigas is one of the best defensive catchers in the league. Stud in left. Excellent center fielder. Tipa, 
roller coaster and right, but he, he's a championship right fielder. What a good analysis of T Pub that was, because he could make any play, but then he could miss any he, play. He's, he's a roller coaster. He's a, he really is roller coaster. So the team is filled out, but they just it could have been better. And um, okay, yeah. I have a couple of thoughts. This guy is as good as the center fielders that go way before him, including JT, Abe Jeff, and all these guys. He is phenomenal. I cannot believe how bad he started the first year in YMSL because I'm not familiar with the night. Nice I agree with you. Shimmy's a stud. Great value. Like, if you're going to get JT at 11 and you're going to get Shimmy at 26, that's tremendous value. Exactly. So I love this pick saved this team. Without this pick, you're looking at a disaster. But, but, now he's got to act like these other guys and be the main guy on this team because he is the key component. We know what Jimbo's giving us. Could be the best offensive player in the league. We know what Z is giving us. Could be the best player in the league, hands down. So you have these two monsters. So this is instead of Z's compliment to Farka, he has Jimbo. Not as fast, but a phenomenal hitter by any by any account. You'll give it him the MVP. I'm like, actually going to take this away. I'll tell you why. Why? He's not going to get the at-bats. He's not going to get a pitch. Who's going to be behind him? Zach's not behind him. Zach wants to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, after last year, he put Zach was after Farka last year. I think after that, even though he won, I think he's gonna he's gonna want to hit this year. I think he's gonna be behind. I think he's gonna be Jimbo's gonna be behind him. But if he's behind him, then Jimmy will an MVP. If Jimmy's behind him, he's not gonna get any at bats. They only have two big bats in the lineup. Well, I think Jimmy so has to one be of them the big are, One of them's not swinging. I think Jimmy has to be the big. He's bat. gonna be the leadoff. Oh, Nate beat Nate. They like Nate leadoff. They always put Nate leadoff. And he I don't needs, like that. Oh, Aharon. He'll be leadoff. No, he needs to do Nate leadoff because his lineup is so short. Right. If he puts Nate at the bottom of the lineup, you're in trouble. He needs to get lucky with Nate this year and right. hope Nate hits. So last year, Nate was really one of the key reasons why they won. He had a 20-plus hit season. Yeah. He's really not that guy. He's really like more like a 10, 12 hit guy. But again, he'll be batting and, in front and, of Z and Jimbo this time instead of batting. So if in front he of does Z get 20 hits again. Jimbo, right before Fark and Z, right before Jimbo and Z, that's going to be huge. But you, either way, you're forced to put somebody else one. You can't go straight to your big boys because of how short the lineup is. So you have Nate at number one. Then you figure you go to Z right away. Then you go to Jimbo three, Shimmy four, Aharon five. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, who's six now, though? Now you get to the hard part of the lineup. You're dealing with Mishon. Jigga, these two. Mishon six. Jigga seven, raw, dog. raw eight, Saul nine, T Pop Joe. Well, Joe Ash, if he's not fielding, is gonna have to bat. He'll be ten, correct. So he'll be ten. Jeff doesn't bat, and T Pop won't bat. Right. Um, okay. Their so, bench, they don't have these two. I don't know how Joe Ash plays, but they don't have flexibility if the guy is missing. Also, so they're not deep on the bench. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's not a great team at all. Okay, so Z is sort of like married to Nate Batesh. Even though Nate doesn't hit great, although, like you mentioned the stat last year, he always takes them and it, it hurts him offensively as a whole because he doesn't have a great offensive team in general. Um, what do you think of this pick at 33? Tremendous. I was actually going to pick him. We wanted him at 30, I think I had the 39th pick, Avi Saka. We wanted him at 39, he went 33. He was overdrafted a little bit by, I guess, a round, but um, great player. Okay, so I also, my, my only question mark on draft day was Aharon, who I love. Great guy, played right field last year when he's definitely a left fielder or even a center fielder. So, but I have to see if his bat is really, I mean, people are saying that he's, he's younger than MC, he's getting stronger, and he's on his way to becoming a phenomenal player. So there's upside here. You got a lot of Major upside. upside. He had that, he hit, uh, he had the game-winning walk-off. It wasn't a walk-off, but it was the top of the inning. Against but he had the game-winning homer against Navy. Sailed over his head in left field. Yes. Hit a bomb. So now it's one year later. Um, you got he's clutch. And one year later, you got to say he got stronger and bigger. Like, when I first came in the league, AVJ first came in the league, we were um, – we couldn't really hit as good as we did a couple of years later. It's just the way it is. You get bigger and stronger. So – Aharon, you got to give him a couple of years. I think finally now it's been a couple of years. I know this is only his second year here, but he's been playing in Max's league. So it's more like this is his time. I think he's going to break out this year. If not this year, he'll break out next year. Well, they need it to be this year because Jeffrey has been playing on teams that are good defensively last year. Two years ago, they were bad at everything. 
this year, last year he had a good defensive team, but not a great offensive team. This year, I think he has a good defensive team. Let's talk about their defense. You have Nate at third. He's very good. Stud. Z at short center, phenomenal. Saul at, I mean, Z at short stop, phenomenal. Saul at short center, Stud. I think he's phenomenal defensively. Great arm, by the way. Saul Stud. played a little bit of third last Stud. year. Stud. Stud. Very good. Jimbo at second, you said he's great I, I, defensively. I'm a, I'm a big fan of him. He positions his team well, even though Zach likes oh, to do that. Oh, God. Zach is not going to put Zach's up Zach's not going to have that, I know. But Jimmy's smart. I would listen to Jimmy. Obviously, he gets the final call, but I would listen to him. He knows what he's doing. Um, he definitely has to chill out a little. But I like his glove. I actually think he's good. Could he Could he, Could he? he F up a game? Absolutely. But um, I like his glove. He didn't have a great World Series defensively when he was on SmackDown. The Mocas and famous home run when Mocas went like this with the helmet. He picked it up. He, dropped he is it. capable of wrecking a game defensively. And he just did that this past Sunday. Uh, we had a scrimmage game. And um, he was dreadful on the field. Made a bunch of errors. Throwing the ball around. Mental miscues. He had the same exact play as as the Mars Kasson play on that home run in the World Series. Same exact thing. Mark Brown had a home run. And it was really a triple. And... Jimmy played into a home run. He's standing out there with the ball, holding the ball too long, and he's too far away. He's not realizing where he is. He thinks his arm is better than it is, although it is a good arm. And he's capable of making that sexy play. He's capable of, he's also, you know, he makes, he has a great arm. Sometimes it, it you know, lands in the parking lot, but when he connects, he has a quick trigger. He's able to turn to, so, you know, he's a mixed bag, Jimmy. You can get a great Jimmy, and you can get a game record defensively, Jimmy. Yeah, I remember two years ago, Jimmy was upset that he was not nominated for a gold glove for second base. And after he voiced those concerns, he had a terrible defensive uh, World Series. He was very bad in that World Series. But I think we all know why Jimmy is drafted where he is. It is for that mighty, mighty bat. And Z is not expecting a gold glove second base from him. Z will understand that every now and then there will be an error at second base. But I don't think Z will have the patience for Jimmy's shenanigans, which are slowing the game down to move a right fielder over one step. Uh, you know, some of the funny things that Jimmy does and that he's known for, I don't think Z is going to have the patience for that. It's really up to Zach what's going to, you know, what's going to happen. Is Zach going to take control, which I believe he is? And I think Zach's the perfect um, guy to play with. Um, if, if, you know, I think it's the perfect pairing for Jimmy. I really do. I like it a lot. I think Zach's going to keep him under control, keep him under wraps, and, uh, you know, keep him from getting out of sorts. And, um, you know, it's something to look at closely throughout the season, how these two are meshing. Bottom line is, Jimmy's bat is as good as anybody's in the league. And you have a lineup of Nate, Z, Jimmy, Shimmy, Aharon, and then you have a decent bottom of the lineup. I think it's better than most people think. The reason I think Jeffrey is going to be pleasantly surprised is because the bottom of the lineup, I think, could hit better than he thinks. I think he will be pleasantly surprised that Raw Dog and Jig and Saul, they're not going to bat 500, but they could get their hits, they could beat Clutch. Really, really weak. They have three hitters. They have Shimmy, you have Zach, you have Jimmy, and after that, you have a bunch of salt towels, Nathan Batesh's, Eddie Michon's, uh, Raw Dogs, uh, T-Pup, Joe Ashkenazi, Zach's brother, who we don't know yet. Um, you know, you have a bunch of guys like that. These are guys that you don't have to play deep, and you play shallow, and it's going to be hard for these guys to get to manufacture runs. You know, man on second, salt towel delivers a big hit. He's not scoring from second, you know, because you're playing shallow for salt towel. Now, if Nathan Batesh... You know, Nathan Matesh is up with a man on first, base hit. It's more likely that you're going to gun the guy out at second on a force play than he is going to go from first to third. Instead, it's going to be, you know, base to base with these guys because these guys cannot hit the ball far. So big disadvantage with this lineup. Um, now, look, last year swimming, you know, they didn't have the most sexy roster, but Zach turned it around and his team played clutch and they played big time and they... They did what they had to do. They were the best team in the league, and they won the championship. So, you know, Zach has his hands full this year. Can he do it? He's done it last year. So the answer is yes, he can do it. And uh, let's see, let's see how he does this year.
you know he, i think he has his hands full though also the chemistry i know you wanted to run through all these guys good chemistry you mentioned road dog jeff sack is one of the best teammates um eddie michon's a great teammate z rallies his troops a lot of great guys shimmy's a great guy aharon's a great kid all of them are great guys and so you have chemistry there i'm gonna go chemistry and smart zach's a very smart player Chemistry is in, in A. If Jeffrey buys in, is Jeffrey going to be the problem he'll, with the chemistry? He'll, listen, if they're losing, you know, it's not going to be good. But if they're winning, he's going to be very happy, just like anyone else, just like anything else. Can this team survive a one and three start if it falls Absolutely. to that? Absolutely. They can. I okay. Do. I, I, do. I, I believe I, I, so too. I don't see any, any issues here. As for my predictions on this team um, and my, you know, my ranking, I have this team as a C. Plus. I uh, have them on the outside looking in on the playoffs. I have them in that 7 and that 6, 7, 8 seed. Can they make the 4 or 5 game? Absolutely. They absolutely can. Um, it's a 14-game season. I mean, anything can happen. It's not like you're playing 62 games. If you're playing 62 games, no, I'd have this team not making that 4 or 5 game. But you're playing 14 games. Anything can happen. And, uh, you know, they could squeak into that 4 or 5 game. What I will say is... Uh, I'll stamp it here right now. They are not going to be a bye team. They will not be the one, two, three seed. No way. I'd be shocked. Um, I just think it's another anemic offensive team. And Jeffrey Saka, as good as, as good as he was last year, um, you know, we couldn't hit last year for him. I think he's going to have the same situation this year. Great defense. He's going to pitch great, but the team's not going to hit enough, and ultimately result in missing. Stick around and you'll see what I mean There's a mountain top that I'm dreaming of If you need me, you know where I'll be I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun Feeling like a someone I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun Feeling like a someone South of the equator, navigator, gotta hit the road.